Microphones are at least dynamic microphones, SM57, uh, are almost exactly like a speaker. This is the coil back there of the speaker, and this is the same way in the dynamic microphones. As the coil, and you can see it slips, magnet, magnet, it slips right in that place between the magnet. So as it goes in and out, it creates more voltage, basically, because the magnetic structure is, is, is stronger. As far as I know, is the magnet structure, which is the guy back here, as you all know, um, is a special neodymium magnet, which means it has greater magnetic properties. So supposedly, um, there are some properties as far as frequency response. Supposedly, it has a little better high end for a lot of different reasons. But basically, it works exactly the same way. Now, any kind of cardioid microphone, directional microphone, is going to have a bass boost when you get the microphone as close to the source as you can. Well, the closer you get it, the more bass boost you get. And that comes from just the, the, the physics of the, the way the microphone is developed. Uh, there are people who believe that getting it really close to the speaker because of that proximity boost is very pleasing. If you want to have a nice full body bottom end, get it close. If you want to have it a little more wispy, take it farther away. Uh, Quick question on the oh sorry sure. proximity effect. Yeah. Yeah. Is like what's the curve in the reduction in the base when you're pulling back? Is it like plummet or is it basically a straight it's line? All different. Is it depends, depends on the microphone. Yeah, each microphone, you get a microphone, they, if it's a decent microphone and a decent manufacturer, they will give you a plotting of the polarity of the mic and how it rejects. If it's a cardioid mic, it's like a reverse heart, right. where right in the back it rejects a good deal, usually about 20 dB. Uh, and as you move to the sides, it reduces less, and at the top, it gets the most. But each frequency is different. So at 1,000 cycles, it will have one plot. At 100 cycles, it may be more omnidirectional. At 10,000 cycles, it may be totally different too. The, the mics we're using today, these 57s, are cardioid pattern microphones. Mm -hmm. And they, have, um, they do have excellent projection from the rear. And part of what creates more of the proximity effect, correct me if I'm wrong, is the cardioid pattern. Yes, yes, because you are, yeah, you're much closer to it and the, the, the base gets around there. So if you had an omnidirectional, omnidirectional microphone, it's not going to have as much proximity. Exactly. Effect. And the proximity effect is going to increase the base. Right back for these mics, for cardioid microphones, or any kind of super cardioid, hyper cardioid. There's some slots in there, or holes, or whatever they do. So you have sound coming in the front, and you have sound coming in these slots. And some genius in Sure or AKG or Sennheiser figured out, hey, if we put these little slots or holes in the right places, the sound coming in the front will uh, be much, much louder than the sound coming in through these slots in the back, which hit it at reverse phase, of course, because they're hitting the back of the diaphragm. But the sounds coming from the rear will come in these slots and hit this with the same um, force as it does hit the front, thus canceling each other out. So you have this engineered reduction of sound.
are some heavily distorted things? Yeah, I was going to just switch the channel on the boogie. Sure. While we're doing that, let's also move the um, mic on the on the twin. Okay. Change the angle. The angle for the microphone, uh, that close microphone. Uh, it's because, well, we looked at the speaker, the way the speaker was, because the speaker is glued at the edges. If you and, look at, sorry, if you look at those diagrams, mm -hmm. we, you, we indicated it on the diagram yes. about how the frequency response changes from the middle of the cone to the end right. of the cone. Right, exactly. It can't move in and out fast enough to handle, I don't know, let's say 4,000 cycles per second. Right. Um, it can, towards the center, as long as, the, as long as everything is working in the, in the coil and everything, but the outer edges just can't move as fast. Plus the fact that the actual pumping action is right in the center. So it can just vibrate like mad. And the outside, uh, by the time it travels that piece of paper, six inches or whatever, four inches, it just doesn't translate. For example, You'll see specs on your stereo speakers or on microphones that say this can produce, let's say, 10 cycles to 20,000 cycles. A guitar amp is only, we were talking about it the other day, is only going to produce, that 12-inch speaker in there is only going to produce maybe top 9,000 9, kilohertz. Oh, wait, 9, is that 9,000 hertz? 9,000 kilohertz. 9,000 kilohertz. That's like 9 million hertz. Um, no, no. Oh, 9, <laughs> 9 kilohertz. 000. Nine, nine kilohertz. Nine kilohertz. It's nine right? Yeah, nine thousand, nine thousand cycles per second. <laughs> <laughs> Super fast. But on the edge, it's three k, right? We said it's about three k, yeah. which is Probably the notch, less. which which is the notch that we're really familiar with. This mid range notch that we're really familiar with, mm -hmm. with with the sound of a guitar, and it has a lot to do with that. Is that you're getting so much sound off of the side of the speakers that it very much enters the characteristic sound of the instrument. And to further confuse it. As you travel away from the dust cap in the center, the frequency just goes down. <laughs> so that being said, let's listen to some of the things we have. This is in front of this is in front of the twin. There's the front one. It's got more bass. some songs where you don't want to hear the strokes of the guitar, the, the guitar coming in heavy, you just want it in the background. And you add a few of these guitars that are kind of uh, out of focus. Basically, what you have, just have to think of is how it sits in the mix. What happens if you combine them together? They could sound pretty good. Um, you get some of the compression uh, that the air brings um, along with that, that high end. There's ways to use that. Face isn't all bad if it's 108 degrees out, and I'll show you why. Let's go on to the um, these two guys. This is the one in the room, the little mesa. Lots of times when you're doing a solo where you want something scooped or something peaked out. I mean, imagine a wah-wah pedal stuck in one position. I mean, that's what it's going to sound like. And you will hear it more. Why is it good to have it like that? Because you don't have to turn it up more in the mix. I mean, if you 
if it stands out, if it's got its own little tonal area that it stands out, you're not going to have to turn up as much. Give it its own character. Give it its own signature. Time equals tonal peaks or valleys. Tonal peaks or valleys are what this is all about. The EQs. I mean, when you want to add something to 3,000 cycles, what you're doing is you are literally putting a plumbing tube sometimes on that signal. It's, it is delaying things. Analog EQs do their action because of electronic components. They literally slow down the signal. EQs use that quite a bit. There's different circuits that incorporate these, and there's all kinds of filters. There's Butterworth filters, and there's third third degree filters of, of a certain sort and all this stuff. And they all do different things as far as how they work on the sound itself. But they physically are delaying parts of the frequency spectrum. And so that's why we're saying it's the same thing as phase, is that it's, it's yes. using that change in time. Absolutely. Yeah. Signal goes in, and it's held, and then it's let out at a certain point. And right. depending on the microfarad uh, value, it holds it for a certain amount of time. That's all there is to it. And what digital EQ does is it does it to the sound waves themselves. Um, and they, they are either, I don't know a whole lot about the whole technique involved, but it's either much less or no phase shift. do is let's record a little bit more and I want to throw a little pipe on one of that mic, uh, one mic by the Fender Twin and okay. put another two close ones, two close mics, one with a little bit of a physical plumbing problem. Awesome. Let's see what Don, what kind of plumbing problem Don fixed up for us. <laughs> oh my god, no, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> I know. It's... Where is it written? Are they the same, are they the same mic? Oh, this is why I like working with this. I'm not licensed. <laughs> Do your thing.